It's Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank. It's WCCS AM 1160, FM 101.1. Phone number 479-1160, 349-WCCS. That's 349-9227. If you have a question for Mr. Robert Pollack, who is across the way from us right now, we're not uh, as exactly dry like California dry, <laughs> uh, but um, we certainly have had a dry start to our fall. Uh, picked up a little bit with some rain this week. Um, we did, uh, but uh, the the dry weather does impact uh, the leaves a lot, doesn't it? Brings them down quicker. Yeah, it will, and it's I not going to be so both, colorful. I don't think. Yeah, both conditions will do that. Mm-hmm. You know, when we get a lot of wet rain and and uh, wind, that'll bring them down as as will the the dry weather also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had uh, high expectations. You know, three weeks ago or four weeks ago for the fall foliage and. We Not have, so we, much now. We haven't quite seen that yet. Not so much now. They haven't even started to but, turn yet. No. They just go so, uh, right to dead and fall yeah. off the tree. <laughs> yeah. There's still a lot of them out there, though, that we might see some color yet. Yes. You know, if we can keep the, if we can get the, this cooler weather trend temperature wise, because mm-hmm. um, sunny days and cool nights, uh, just, you know, above freezing, mm-hmm. those will. And as long as there's moisture in the ground, which there is now for yeah. the most part, that we could still have some color to see. Right. Well, that could be starting next week. Good morning, color. Good morning. Um, yes, um, I was wanting to ask Bob if this would be a good time of the year to transplant a blueberry bush. Just to transplant a blueberry bush. I would wait a little bit. Wait till it goes dormant. Let all the let it color up and let the leaves fall off. Uh, so really, probably when we get into at this point November, okay, um, you could move it then. Okay. Has it been there for a long time, or? Yes, and it's it, stuff is overgrowing it, and I need to move it to a better place. Better, better, sunnier location. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it, those those plants have a shallow. We call it a fibrous, shallow, fibrous root system, um, in. They like to be mulched, uh, so you're not going to have to dig real deep to get that plant out of the ground, but but try to dig as big a root ball as you can that you can handle okay. um, to move it. That'll And definitely waiting till it goes dormant will also be very beneficial. And just All make right. sure there's enough moisture in the ground uh, as well. Water be- it then. Huh? Yeah, if, yeah. Check, yeah, check the, the soil moisture, and if it seems dry, you know, one good weekly watering will go a long way to help make sure that, that the plant's good and um, it will we'll have better chances of survivability. All righty. The, the, the other option there is to wait until winter's over when we get into March and do it then. Which would be better? Um, probably March would be the best time All right. because we've, we've had the worst of winter over and depending on what, how we go into transition from fall to winter this year and what kind of winter we have, you know, if we have a milder winter, then that'll, you could do it this fall and probably not have any problem. If we have a tough winter, then it, it may be it. a little bit more stressful on it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. All righty. Bye now. There you go. That's a good one. We haven't had a question of that nature for uh, a good long yeah. time. Um, and blueberry yeah. bushes, they're, they're temperamental, aren't they? They require yeah, they really specific be... soils to go well, into. Well, y- yes, and, and that's the other thing. Hopefully, the location where you're moving it to has acid soil. Mm-hmm. So she should maybe get a soil test before that, she moves it to a, yes. an area that she's considering? At, at minimum, do a pH test, um, and better yet would be to get a regular soil test Mm-hmm. And the results will come back for blueberry, and so if we need to amend the soil and make the soil more acidic, we can get that sulfur on. Actually, it'd be wonderful to work that area up where you're going to transplant it to, and mix in the sulfur if it needs it, and yeah. then any other nutrients that may be needed in that new site. Mm-hmm. Get that all done this fall, and then. Go ahead in the and spring, transplant come, it. Come March early, as well. Yeah, late winter, early spring. Okay, yep. there you go. That's so that's a that's a extra. solid plan there. Yeah.
And and for anybody who wants to know, um, give them an idea of how they can get a soil test done. So we have the soil test kits at our office at 827 Water Street, and the $9 for the analysis. So you pick up the kit, pay the $9, um, you take the kit home, and the kit basically is a form that you'll complete and send in with the sample, and it's a self-mailer. I just need to affix the postage, take it to the post office, get it weighed, and get the proper postage affixed to it. Mm -hmm. And there's a bag in there, a Ziploc bag to put your soil in. And within a week, and sometimes it's less, uh, you'll have those results back. The results that come back, are are they hard to interpret? Um, because you're not sending out and say, with a little note that says, I'd like to plant a blueberry bush. I need to know if it's if it's acidic enough. Uh, you're, you're not getting that detailed in your description, I, I oh, assume. You, no, you are. Oh, when you, you are? When you submit that sample, you select the crop. There's a crop code, a number for each crop. Mm-hmm. So whether you're planting, establishing grass or... Uh, turf maintenance or planting blueberries or Mm -hmm. blueberry maintenance um, that will be you select that crop code so that when when you get the results back there'll be a bar chart on there uh, which gives you low optimum and excessive and it shows where the nutrient levels are on that chart it also gives numbers it's much easier to look at the chart and see oh i'm Mm -hmm. low or i'm optimum or or, i'm excessive um and then the numbers are also there. Probably the biggest number that you're going to key into is the soil pH yeah. and what that number is. Well, with that in mind, uh, folks who have finally cleaned out their gardens and now they're laying out there uh, just looking all forlorn and everything, and they're thinking about what they want to plant next year or maybe they haven't even decided and uh, thought that far, probably a good time right now to get the soil tested from one or two spots within that garden. Yes, and then um, th- that way they can, over the winter, they can treat that soil so that in the spring it's ready to go. That's, yeah. That would be an excellent plan. Oh, okay. And so and we're always trying to take a representative sample of the area that we want to plant with a crop or crops. Mm-hmm. And in the vegetable garden, there's a section for, they just call it general vegetables. So the results will come back for a variety of vegetables versus one vegetable okay. in that particular area. Mm-hmm. So that'll come back like that. That's it. Oh, and the recommendations will also be on there. So if depending on your pH, so if our pH is uh, 6.8 on this blueberry soil and we need it to be 4.5, it will say you need to apply so many pounds of lime per 100 square feet. Okay. So the recommendation, it's not just the results of what's there but it also includes the number of pounds of the particular nutrients you need to apply. Here's your problem. Here's how to fix it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there are, there are tests that are done where that's all you get back is just, mm-hmm. well, here's what we tested and found, uh, but there are no recommendations for how to solve that or what to do to get it where it needs to be in the optimum range. So that is for vegetables and, and blueberries of fruit there. Um, does that same theory then apply to just general shrubbery or, yes. or anything else that you yep, want to plant? There are codes for trees and shrubs, mm-hmm. lawns. Statuary. Fruit, vegetables, yeah, <laughs> statuary, yeah, yeah. water features. Need yeah. To, need to no, we, have, we, have, we have water testing kits for those, <laughs> for water features, yeah, for testing, you know, backyard ponds, um, farm ponds, uh, backyard ponds, uh, that are landscape features. Uh, if you want to test the water in there, and of course, so we've got we've got um, testing kit for for livestock water, uh, for ponds that are used for irrigation, uh, fish ponds, cisterns. Um, you know, so drinking water. We have yeah. testing kits for drinking water as well. So all those tests can be done. So, so if you're putting in the big koi pond, can, can yeah, you can ha- even yeah. run a test on that. Yep. See if the koi will survive. Yeah. Wow. So there's there's kits for all that. Um, and, and basically the reason is there's not availability to that equally across the state. So some places have water testing companies that can do certain tests and others don't have availability that are specific to some of these agricultural mm-hmm. needs. So they developed the series of testing kits um, so that there was accessibility to that 
across the state for those that needed it. Yeah, I would guess if you're dipping some water out of the pond to send in, it doesn't go in a Ziploc bag. Um, you know, drinking water, <laughs> <laughs> human drinking water, we, there are a number of labs that yeah. are certified and available across the state. And, and there are local labs here. here yeah. Yes, that can do those tests. But then when we start getting into irrigation water and livestock drinking water and things mm -hmm. like that, then they may they may be able to t they would be able to test the water but then what does that mean for either that crop or that animal all right there you go he's bob pollock from the extension thank you sir you are welcome thank you